Welcome to Redefining Medicine, an intimate and personalized program that illustrates a different side of the practice of medicine. Our in-depth conversations will focus on mentors and motivators who are consistently reshaping, redefining, and rediscovering the field of medical health care. I'm happy to welcome Linda Hayes, PharmD. Linda is currently pursuing the A4M Fellowship. Linda is passionate about achieving positive patient outcomes through innovative compounding therapies. Thank you for joining us today. So why don't you share a little bit about your background? I am a pharmacist. I graduated from the University of Michigan in 2005. And um, since I've been in retail, I've done a little bit of long-term care pharmacy, um, and I am now outside of Indianapolis, Indiana, and I um, have managed and operated three independent pharmacies the last maybe five or six years. And so the last one was 100% compounding. And I went to PCCA and became, got trained there for compounding. And then I did the HRT uh, specialty training. And that is actually where the fellowship, I, they, they had an event there and I had just wanted to learn more about helping patients because it's so much more than hormones. And I know a lot of patients, they start with their hormones, they start feeling bad and it it's usually has to do with the hormones, but there's an underlying cause that you need to treat it. So um, yeah, I just wanted to know more. There was a uh, talk on neuroinflammation and I actually have a personal experience with having a bad back when I, my kids were younger. And I did go to a naturopathic clinic and I said, I'm a pharmacist, so, you know, I know there's inflammation in my body, I need to get rid of this. And I didn't want, I'd had like 12 epidural injections and SI joint ablation, uh, L4 through um, S1 ablation, and I was done with all those. But unfortunately, they missed markers, they did labs, they didn't do anything about the inflammation in my body. So I did find another way to kind of help with it. So I just, I want, it to get out there how to deal with inflammation in the body so that patients don't have to suffer. I, I, I mean, I wanted to be up running around with my kids and I, for a couple of years there, that it was pretty tough, so. So you found A4M, you enrolled in the fellowship. Mm -hmm. So can you share how far along you are and how it's going for you? So just, I decided to go for the more advanced fellowship. I really wanted to do the um, <clears throat> mitochondria restoration, which that right now has been my favorite module. So I have done, um, the endocrine, um, I highly recommend starting with the endocrine, that's kind of where you start off. And then, um, let's see, I did that last July, and then I did neurology next. And I have a bachelor's degree in psychology also too, so that opened my whole world up to the, to the mind, um, um, not just neuroinflammation, but also it has to do a lot of with psych, so that was pretty awesome to me. And um, let's see, I did GI online. And I traveled a lot. I listened to a lot of it, um, just traveling and stuff like that. So, and then I did, let's see, GI. I did, um, I actually signed up for the peptide certification. So then I did one and two, I'd already missed that online. And then I did three and four in Vegas um, uh, this past December. So. Then I did my um, mitochondria restoration module, and now I am here doing cardiology. Sounds like you're fast tracking. Yeah, I, well, some say, but I mean, I, I love to learn, so I'm trying to get it in there with kids and everything, so yeah. Can you discuss the importance of the physician-pharmacist-patient triad? So basically, um, before I even started the fellowship, I was getting um, hormone consultations from prescribers. They just didn't really want to deal with it. They, I think they were just getting into it. So um, I was, I mean, I had a background in hormones, so I was, uh, I was you know, kind of dipping into that. And um, this fellowship has tremendously helped me talk to patients as well as physicians, guide the physicians on what labs they may need to get how to do the labs. A lot of them want to do, you know, they're doing hormone creams and they want to do serum testing and, you know, we really need the saliva testing to be accurate. Um, also, the peptides, um, the protocols, all the physicians, the newer physicians who are just realizing that these are out there because it is pretty new, um, they don't know the protocols. So um, I am helping them out with that right now. So let's discuss peptides a bit. 
So our podcast is geared towards both the practitioner as well as the layperson. So can you help educate them a bit as to what peptides are and the uses? So peptides, there are 7,000 uh, naturally occurring peptides in the body. So the idea is, is to give these peptides to help basically the body rejuvenate itself and, and to be simple about it. And um, depending on what area or what you want to do is which you know peptide, there are protocols. And what you do is you normally rotate them or use them together depending on what you're treating. And so it's very kind of detailed and specific um, how you want to do that so and how to, what labs you should get that vice versa yeah so how are they administered oral IV so some peptides are taken orally most because they are larger and we cannot get the bioavailability orally they have to be usually a sub-Q injection so and there are some that you can inject into the joints to help inflammation and rejuvenate that joint so instead of just throwing a steroid in there and, you know, it, those, those steroids, those injections hurt. So, I mean, if you throw a steroid in there and it's temporary, whether it works or not, and so um, these rejuvenate the tissue. So It goes back to the philosophy of getting to the root cause. Yeah, we, I mean, Band-Aids are okay for a little bit, but we want to get to the root cause. Otherwise, you're not going to be fixed. So. so can you talk a little bit about HRT? You indicated that you had a bit of a background in this prior to joining the A4M Fellowship. So how is the A4M education different from what you originally learned about it? 100% different. Um, it's, you, you mean, you just dabble on what the hormones do and you have no idea what's behind, what's driving those hormones to all of a sudden go out of whack. And um, you, the understanding that I've gained from the fellowship has just, it's been awesome. It's been amazing, um, you know, to be able to help patients beyond hormones. And it's a lot more than just estrogen, testosterone, and progesterone, right? There's, yeah, there's the symphony, there's pregnenolone, starts with your cholesterol. Uh, you don't want it to be too, too low, actually, because you've got to be able to make those hormones. And then pregnenolone, you know. DHEA, these are all important hormones that work together. A lot of patients, they hit maybe 40, at 40, 35, 40, and so they start having some symptoms. That's where they notice they go get their hormones checked out, and oh, this isn't working right. And that's, I would, um, that's when it all starts, I feel like. Um, some maybe with uh, premenstrual syndrome, they might have um, some kind of issues that progesterone could help with. Uh, before 35 or so. And our hormones vary depending on where we are in life. Stress, your cortisol, um, also plays a role in whether your hormones go up and down. So everybody's different. Do you find yourself still having to educate and defend the safety of HRT or BHRT due to the study that was published way back in 2002? Yes, I definitely find that a lot of physicians, they don't know that estradiol taken orally can cause cancer. Um, it's most safely when it's applied to the skin. Um, and the, yeah, there are some patients that know, you know, uh, I can't take, I can't take estrogen. I had a family, my, my grandma had breast cancer at 50. And um, actually that's my case, my grandma did. But if you, my mom was put on hormone replacement, including the estradiol cream, but you have to also measure certain things so that you're getting rid of that bad estrone uh, metabolites that you don't recircle it so that you have issues with estrogen. So it is, it, it, and it helps your blood pressure, it helps bone, uh, keep bone density. So there's much more that these hormones do that you need and as you age, um, we lose those hormones and it's just part of the aging process in addition to other things maybe behind that, but um, yeah. Can we talk a bit about the mitochondria module? The mitochondria restoration module, I really liked. I felt like I started putting a lot of what's behind the hormones together. Um, why, are, why is our body inflamed? Um, what diseases are called for, are from uh, inflammation in the body. So it all comes back to the health of the mitochondria. So if we can't get that mitochondria working properly, we cannot, we can't do much. So, and you don't want to overload or detoxify the patient too much. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a process here. So, but it really started putting everything together for me. So was that knowledge originally even on your radar? No, the Krebs cycle, may, back in, I graduated in 2005. So the Krebs cycle, I 
I remember the name, and I even think you'll see that physicians here, they're like, what? Oh man, I have to go back to that Krebs cycle. It is about even more than the Krebs cycle. There's transsulfuration pathways. There's, you know, different detox and, and different enzymes that you need to look at that, you know, even you might have gene SNPs with MTHFR, you know, playing into effect for the folic acid, you know, so there's so much more. So do you find that you are oftentimes counseling physicians and patients on alternative options of treatment? Yes. So how do you go about that? In my practice, I, ha I will have the clinical studies to show them, look, this is the most recent, um, you know, guidelines. They're actually saying this, you know, ACE inhibitor is a handful of them that you actually don't want to give the patients. Um, uh, so there's, there, and you have to, you have to support it with the studies. That way I feel like the physicians will understand where I'm coming from. They all say, oh, okay. They are so busy, it's hard for them to keep up. So that's what I'm doing as a pharmacist. I'm preparing myself so that I can give them those studies and, and have an organized file where, you know, and keep up. Um, I knew um, going into this that it's going to be I love to learn, and I knew it was going to be more of a lifelong process. So, but I'm excited to keep coming to A4M, even the World Congress, the, and just everybody I've met through this uh, fellowship, all the physicians. Um, everybody has just been so awesome. So to work with, to bounce ideas off, um, I've made connections pretty much uh, across the country. And you know, it, we text, we ask questions, people bounce stuff off me, physicians, nurse practitioners. They'll bounce their ideas off me and I'll bounce my ideas off of them. So yeah, so it's, it's really kind of a great network to get into. Well, thank you so much for joining us and best of luck to you. <laughs>